Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have some more content specifically for users of interactive brokers. I'm going to be talking about iBeam, which is an authentication and maintenance tool used for the interactive brokers client portal web API gateway. And that's quite a lot. What is that and why do I care? I already did a video on interactive brokers. And if you'll remember in that one, I covered this Trader Workstation API, which is one way of interacting with interactive brokers, right? And so we wrote some programs to interact with TWS or the Trader Workstation. And, our, and in order to use that, you'll remember uh, the method of programming that is a little bit different. It's not your typical uh, REST API where you make a web request to some server uh, with Python and get a JSON response back. You'll remember we actually uh, created this a socket connection, there's this uh, e-client socket and e-wrapper uh, class, and then uh, you create this a socket connection to this desktop application that's running on your local machine at all times. And uh, yeah, so you just write Python code and establish this connection, and there's callback functions and threads and so forth. And so that model of programming is a little unfamiliar, unfamiliar to a lot of people, so uh, it can be a bit harder to use. And so what I was curious about is if interactive brokers had an alternative to this. Like how do we program this if we don't want to write uh, this type of program? What if we just want to use a, a regular old uh, web request in order to, to uh, make trades, in order to get historical data, in order to uh, get option data uh, from interactive brokers? And when looking this up, if you've looked this up before, uh, there's this interactive brokers client portal uh, web API, which again, um, one downside to interactive brokers is it's not super friendly to use. If you read through this, it mentions uh, Java 8 update 192, gateway is compatible with this version of OpenJDK 11, download this zip file, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't seem quite intuitive still. And so fortunately for us, there are uh, people in the open source community, such as uh, Voiz. Uh, I, don't, I don't know this person, but I think they've done a great uh, job on this. And so the aim of this iBeam project is to make it a little bit easier to use this client portal web API because it's actually uh, a bit confusing to figure out how to use it. And so if you look through here, it gives a number of benefits. Uh, number one, it has a uh, continuous headless run of the gateway and no physical display required. And what's nice about this is that we can actually uh, deploy this to a remote server. And so in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to put this on Linode and execute some web API requests from a server server that lives up in the cloud. And it's also containerized using Docker. So you need, don't need to worry about all of these uh, dependencies. It should be very uh, plug and play. And so what I'm gonna do real quick here is just show you how to get this set up and running. And so this uh, tutorial is going to assume you have a Docker uh, running already. So make sure you have Docker. So go to docker.com and click on get started and download a Docker for your, your desktop and get that up and running. And when, once you do that, you should have just a Docker command that you can run on your command line, right? So I have Docker installed and I have the Docker command. And once I have that installed, what I should be able to do is pull this iBeam image. So I'm going to pull that image now. So I'll do Docker pull voice slash iBeam. And this should pull down the image and all the dependencies. So you see it's downloading this Docker image. And once this is done, I should be able to uh, run this uh, container locally on my machine and not have to worry about any of those Java dependencies or how to run this headless gateway and all that stuff. It should just do that all for me. And so let's go ahead and let this uh, finish downloading. It does take a little while. It looks like it's a pretty large image here. All right, so it looks like it's done. So I'm gonna type Docker images and you'll see that I have this uh, Docker image voice iBeam right here. So you see that exists. Looks like it was about a gigabyte. So in order to use this, you need to run this Docker container and you need to pass it your interactive brokers credentials so that you can actually authenticate. You can pass those credentials on the command line as these command line arguments. So you can pass in these environment variables or you can create an environment a file here with all of your information. And so I prefer to use this uh, environment file. So I'm going to go into a new project directory real quick. And so I'll just call this iBeam test. And so I'll go into iBeam test just like that. 
And so I'm at the command line and I'm just going to create a new file here. I'm gonna use VI, but use you can use Visual Studio Code or whatever editor. And so I'm just gonna do env.list. So I have a new file called env.list and I need to provide my account credentials. So I'm gonna say uh, ibeam account equals, and I'm not gonna show you my password, obviously, because there's billions of dollars in, in my Interactive Brokers account, and I don't want you to take them from me. I'm just trying to teach you how to use this thing. So uh, ibeam account, and then ibeam password, and I am going to enter in my real stuff. So this will just be your password and your account and I'm gonna enter mine off of camera and save it to a file. And after you're done inside of this directory, you should just have a file called env.list and you should have your credentials inside of that file. So now that my real credentials are in that file, I'm just going to take this docker run command. So I'm gonna do docker run environment file env.list. So this file is already in my, direct, my directory. And then I'm gonna say dash P and you can tell it what port you wanna run it on. Looks like by default, they just use 5,000, so port 5,000. And you're gonna actually be able to uh, do two-factor authentication from a local host uh, running on your machine. And I'll show you that real quick. So I'm gonna do voice slash iBeam. So what I'm doing is actually uh, running a Docker container now. And so you see it runs and it says, open localhost 5,000 to log in. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually log in. So I'm gonna type in my username and password and my phone is also gonna get a two-factor authentication message. All right, so now that I've entered my two-factor authentication and clicked login, it actually uh, displays client login succeeded and I'm still on localhost here. So what you'll see here in the terminal now is the gateway is running and authenticated. That means I'm ready to use the client web portal API just like that. And that wasn't too bad, right? Uh, and so we can either write a Python program to make web requests against localhost 5000, or we can use Insomnia or Postman or another REST client to just do this uh, graphically. So I'm gonna show you how to do it uh, graphically. In the next video, I'll deploy this to uh, a server and we'll use Python in order to execute these API requests. So you see it's authenticated. You see I, I failed the first time. One note is be careful about failing a login too many times. If you mess up your two-factor auth or forget your password, Interactive Brokers will actually lock you out of your web portal account. And I actually had to call them on the phone and that took like, I had to wait on hold for like 30 minutes. So I hate calling in for stuff. So be careful not to lock yourself out of your account or you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Um, so I'm good to go there. And so what I'm gonna do is use a program I've used on this channel before and it's called Insomnia. So if you do Insomnia REST Client, you can use this. And what this allows you to do is to make uh, web requests uh, using a, a graphical user interface, but we can also do it with Python. I'm gonna show you the Python equivalent afterwards. I just wanna quickly show you uh, how to test this out. And some people like uh, Postman, so you can use Postman if you like using that one as well. So uh, if you wanna use Insomnia like I do, you can just click Get Started and download that. It's absolutely free. So I'm gonna start Insomnia on my local machine and this gives me this nice uh, graphical tool here and I'm gonna create a new uh, request collect collection. So I'm just gonna call this iBeam test. And so this is just a collection of API requests that we can try out. And the first thing I'm gonna do is say new request and let's just see if we can get some market data. So I'm gonna name this request market data, and this will just be our test of whether we can get market data, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the client portal API, um, and let's see. Oh yeah, one quick thing you can do before we even get to Insomnia is just make sure your API requests work from the command line. And so to test this, what they did is use the curl command, which if you have that installed, you can use curl to make an API request uh, from the command line. You'll notice this parameter dash K here, which means uh, don't verify SSL. So I'll do a curl dash dash help here. And you may not have curl on your machine depending on what machine you're running. So uh, you can install a uh, curl, figure out how to install that on your machine. There's a Windows installation, uh, and you, but you don't even need curl at all. This is just one way to test it. So they're making a get request to an API endpoint just to make sure it returns a response. And they're doing a dash K here. And this dash K part is very important. So this is uh, not verifying the SSL certificate. 
So if you're gonna use uh, Insomnia and not verify SSL, uh, what you need to do is click this gear in the top right hand corner and on request response, you wanna uncheck uh, validate certificates in order to interact with uh, HTTPS localhost 5000, okay? So make sure you uncheck that box or you get uh, some type of, I think you get an SSL error. I can't remember what the error message is. So uh, that's what that dash K is, is doing and that's how I replicated that using uh, Insomnia. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Client Portal Web API documentation to see if we can uh, figure out how it works. So I'm gonna click this Interactive Brokers documentation, Client Web Portal API, and you can see a uh, browse available endpoints. So uh, let's see what is available to us. All right, so when you're using the Interactive Brokers API, you care about the contract ID. So that's the, the thing you're going to trade. So let's see if we can get some information about a particular a symbol and all the contracts that are available for that symbol. So I'm gonna to go to contracts and this one says security stocks by symbol. And so you see there's an endpoint here. And so what this is expecting is a get request to localhost 5000, right? And so what I'm gonna do is make a get request, right? I can do get post put patch delete. I'm gonna do a get request to localhost 5000 via one API TRSRV slash stock. So I'm just copying this endpoint and let's see what parameters it requires in order to get uh, the stocks by symbol. So I'm gonna pass it query parameters. So query, query parameters means we do a question mark like that. And so we're including the parameters in the URL and the parameter is named symbols. So I'm gonna do question mark symbols equals, and how does it want the symbols? A list of upper sensitive symbols separated by comma. And so let's say I care about um, Apple, for example, and I've been interested in Western digital stock lately because I heard a bunch of people are buying up hard drives lately and there might be a shortage there. Let's say I'm interested in Western digital stock. So WDC, so symbols equals Apple comma WDC. I'm gonna click send. And just like that, you see that I made an API request to the interactive brokers, client portal web API, and we have Apple here and we have uh, Western Digital in this JSON response. And you see we have this con ID, this contract ID. And let's say I'm interested in this one 13681, which is for Western uh, Digital Corporation. So 13681. And let's say I want to find information about that particular uh, contract. Let's say I'm interested in market data. So I'm gonna click uh, market data here. And let's say I want market data history. And this assumes you, with if you have interactive brokers, you probably have some type of a market data subscription that lets you uh, fetch all this historical data. I have that enabled on my account. And so make sure you have that if you don't already, if you wanna use this. I, I'm assuming if you're using interactive brokers, you have all this stuff already. You have an account and all of that. Okay, so I'm going to use this market data history uh, endpoint. So I'm gonna click new request, uh, market data history. So I'm calling that one market data history. And actually this one is called uh, contract, get stock contract. So I'm just naming these requests just to make it easy to find. And what you can do is make uh, a, with uh, Insomnia is create this collection of API requests that you're interested in, test them out, see the responses, and kind of uh, experiment with this and try it out before you actually write Python code. This lets you just see what the data format looks like, see what the requests look like, make sure everything works. Okay, so we got a stock contract. Now we want this market data history. And I'm gonna paste this market data history here. And what does it want? Query parameters once again. And I'm gonna do question con ID equals. And what contract ID do I want? Uh, we will have 13681 here. So I'm gonna do con ID equals 13681. I'm gonna send that over. And just like that, you see I have uh, this contract for Western Digital Corporation. Uh, so I believe this is just the common stock. And you see under data here, we have a list of open, high, low, close values and volume and timestamp. And so if I checked uh, this timestamp here, uh, let's see what it's for. So we can go to Unix timestamp here, for instance, uh, plug in this timestamp, hit convert. And you see uh, I'm recording this on Sunday right now. So this last traded on Friday. So this is 6.30 a.m. my time, Pacific time. So this is like the first minute of the day uh, for uh, Western digital stock, right? And if I got the second one, um, let's see if this is the minute time frame. So I can go, where am I going? Uh, here, I'll convert it. You see that's 6.31. And if I scroll down here, we have lots of minute data, 
right? And if I got the very last one, and let's see what we got. So I have this, and I'm gonna paste that in, and you see that's for 12.59, which is the last minute the market was open. So this is the regular hours for the market, and we have all this price data that we're fetching from interactive brokers. So good to go. We're already making a couple of API requests. Let's see if we can uh, place an order. So to do that, uh, let's go back to our client portal API and click on order, and let's click on place order. And so you'll see this one's a little different in that it's a post request. So we're not getting data from the server, we're posting an order. So we need to create a new request. So I'm gonna do new request, and I'm gonna say that this is place order. And instead of a get request, I'm gonna do a post request. And this post request uh, requires my account ID. And then it's also going to require me to post a JSON structured uh, payload that looks like this. Right, so I'm gonna do post. And instead of no body, I'm gonna click a JSON as the type of request, and I'm gonna click uh, okay. And so in here, I'm gonna put some JSON payload, right? And so I'm gonna take this URL here, and this is localhost 5000 v1 API i server account slash, and I need to replace this with my actual account ID. And so uh, figure out what your account ID is. If you don't know your account ID, uh, luckily there's a request you can make here that will pull in your account ID. And I don't want to show you my account ID on camera. So I'm going to get, I'm going to make another request called get account and I'm going to get my own account ID and somehow blur it out. All right. So in between here, I'm going to put my account, which is like you one, two, three. And so for my JSON request body here, you'll see, uh, it requires a number of things. So I'm going to send it a contract ID. So I'm gonna do con ID like that. And since we mentioned that we were interested in uh, contract ID 13681, I'm going to put that 13681 right there. We need a security type. So I'm gonna do a SEC type. Okay, and I'm doing a stock. So I think I can just do a stock right there. And let me just click send to see what happens. It says unknown order type, so clearly I need an order type. So there's order type. So I'll put order type, and order type can be market or limit. So let's just do a market order, which is MKT. I'll try send it again. Order size zero is not valid, valid. so uh, we probably need a side, and we need a quantity. So let's do a quantity, and let's just get one share and side uh, buy. Okay. And so I'll submit that time and force, null time and force. So TIF is time and force. So, uh, good till canceled or expire at the end of the day. So I'm just going to say, uh, good till cancel. So I'll do TIF GTC, just like that. And I'm gonna click submit and there you go. So I actually submitted an order. It looks like it gave me an order ID and it says market order confirmation inside of this message here. And yeah, so I assume that'll go through. It's uh, Sunday right now, so I'm not actually placing that order. It's just in the queue right there. And so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to get you up and running with iBeam using the uh, Docker container setup and this environment file and show you how to use Insomnia here to make a few web requests uh, to this client portal API uh, to show you how it works and make sure you know how to look through this documentation and figure out how to send it a post request with an application on J application JSON body and also how to do a get request where you have some query parameters and using all those things together. Now that you're authenticated against interactive brokers and you have this container running, you should be able to test all these out and play around with it with Insomnia and figure out how it works before uh, translating it into uh, Python code using the Python request library. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to see if I can take uh, this Docker container and put it on Linode, which is a virtual private server uh, company I like to use. It's like $5 a month. So I like to use this and I'm going to see if I can get interactive brokers running on a remote server. That way we don't have to be running this on our laptop at all times. And maybe we can build some type of trading bot or system on top of a interactive brokers running in the cloud that's authenticated at all times. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.